what's the kind of crown jewels of your data that you need to, and how quickly do you think you can get back up and running if you have been breached? So I suppose, Matthew, it depends on what type of attack we're talking about, but if we take a worst scale attack, where yeah. somebody gets onto our environment, onto our network and starts, you know, infiltrating the core environment, we've got a number of things placed. So the one is, We've employed 24 by 7 monitoring technology on our network perimeter using dark trace and antigena where we've got it long enough in the environment where it's learned what the normal behavior patterns are of our network. So based on that learning, it's able to initially block and quarantine incidents. And I've got 24 hour support to call on specialists in that environment to be able to assist if at any point in time we pick up a spike anywhere in the environment. That's the one measure. The other measure is we run simulations. So what we're going to spend time on in the next calendar year is running very specific simulations. Now in our space, we've got service providers. So we've got critical service providers that we outsource critical services to, and they are core part of our environment. So what we also think about is if that third party had to be attacked by a ransomware attack or by a major scale attack, we as a core customer of that infrastructure provider could end up being a victim of their attack. So we also run simulations to be able to determine when you look at your third party network, who are those critical dependent third parties where if they are attacked, what is our response? So we've built what we call playbooks. So we've got a playbook, we've got a scenario, and we've got what we call an aid memoir, which basically articulates what the cyber lead coordinator would need to do step by step very quickly as part of our incident management process. We have run a couple simulations with our leadership team, but in our industry, you know, being FMCG, security incidents are a little bit difficult to fathom. You know, they worry about a can of beans or a product coming out of a production line. So for us, it's about helping them gear their mindset on what happens if 702 calls you up. You know, so I always use the analogy to say, Bruce Whitfield is online. They want to speak to our public spokesperson. Are you ready? Are you geared? Do you know what to say? Do you know who to call on? We've kind of refined a lot of those processes and we're going to spend a lot of time simulating that. And then in addition to that, we've recently bought cyber insurance. Luckily enough, we've gotten cover for the entire environment on the IT side, plus our manufacturing sites that we run across the country. So should there be an attack either on the site or within our corporate IT network, I've got access to a 24 by 7 panel of forensic specialists, critical service providers, and we've identified who those critical service providers are. And we've got agreements in place with them to say, should we find ourselves in an attack which is either potentially materializing or has materialized, we will call on you in 24 hours and you would be on site within 24 hours to be able to manage quarantine and minimize the attack scale. And now it's about simulating, upping the awareness within the user community. And we're now paying specific attention to our factory and our site security, where we look at each of our plants and we look at how do we address security from a cyber perspective across those plant environments.